Welcome to the first ever Tech Help Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. I get hundreds of emails, sometimes thousands, of emails, comments, forum posts every week, and obviously I don't have enough time to turn them all into full Tech Help videos, but I want to do my best to help as many people as possible. So I'll be putting together these Quick Queries videos from time to time to give short answers to quick questions. Most of these are variations on topics that I've already covered in other lessons, whether from my full paid courses or other tech help videos. So think of this as doing my best to point you in the right direction. Okay, here we go. The first question is from Vivek from India. Hope I pronounced that right. Vivek asks, is it possible to add a row source to a text box in design view of a form? No, row sources are for combo boxes and list boxes. The row source indicates where that list box or combo box is getting its data from. A text box just holds a single bit of data, like a first name or a last name. The row source in, for example, a customer combo box will give you a list of customers from the customer table. Or you can do a static list of something if you want to, like a status, static list of states or genders or whatever you want to put in there. But row sources are for list boxes and, and, uh, and combo boxes. I cover row sources in my Access Beginner 8 class. Cliff from the U.S. asks, the database that I'm trying to build is for a small electronics repair business. When making tables, would it, in your opinion, be best to make a table for each type of component? Transistor, resistor, capacitor, diode, etc.? No cliff, unless the items have completely different types of data that you need to describe each of them, keep them all together and use a second table to categorize them. I cover this in the Access Expert classes. For example, if they all have the same data associated with them as parts, if they've got a part number, a description, maybe a picture, a price, a serial number, if all of those things are the same, for each of the different categories of, par of part, then just put them all on the same table and add a category or some kind of a classification field, and then you'll link that to a second table. I cover this in my Access Expert Level 1 class. There, and I just realized I forgot to change the slide. Access Expert Level 1. Um, for example, you've got different automobile makers and their models. All right, you've got Ford Taurus, you've got Chevy Camaro, okay? They're all cars. They all have the same fields that will describe the car, but you're just changing who, what the make and model are by selecting from a list of makes and a, and a list of models. That's all. Same thing here. They're all parts. You'll just pick from a category, all right? Resistor, transistor, etc. Those would be Those would be categories. Next question. Cliff from the USA also asked this one, as well as Carl from the UK. Is it possible to convert an estimate into an invoice? And then Cliff said, I think she's going to blow Captain. Is that a reference to Star Trek? Your questions will always get answered if you have a Star Trek reference in them. Well, pretty much always. <laughs> sure, you can copy the entire estimate to an order. I use quotations and orders, same things, or quotations and invoices. It's all the same stuff. All right, a quotation and an invoice generally have all the exact same stuff on them. The only difference is one is a quotation where you're not expecting to be paid for it. The customer doesn't owe you anything for it. And the other one is an invoice. In other words, they've actually, they want the product, you've shipped, you've delivered, whatever, and they, they owe you money for it. That's the only real difference between the two. So you can, you can store them internally in the same table if you want to. I call it an order table. You don't have to have a separate table for invoices versus estimates, unless you've got a whole bunch of different data that you have to have on one or the other. Now, copying a record and all of its child records is kind of complicated. I cover that in my Access Developer Level 24 class. There's some VBA associated. I use a record set to copy the order, because there's two tables involved, right? You get the order table and the order detail table that has all the line items in it. All right, so I use, we do it with one button, we click on it, it copies the order, then it copies all the child records over. That way you can make modifications to it, okay? However, if you're not into programming, in my Access Expert 10 class, I show you how to just take a quotation and change it to an invoice. Basically, it's just one field, yes or no. Is it a quotation? 
All right, if you check that yes, then it doesn't show up in your accounts receivable. All right, it doesn't show up as what the customer owes you. If you say no to it, then it's an invoice and you're expecting to be paid for it. Dave from Thailand asks, DVDs to purchase. I don't know if you have this service or are planning to offer it. Just a suggestion to think about it. Yeah, Dave, I used to ship CDs and DVDs, and I stopped doing that in 2019. When I started my business, when I started this business back in 2002, that's all I did was ship CDs because hardly anybody had high-speed internet at that point, so I didn't put the courses online. So I just shipped out. We shipped out hundreds of CDs a week, in fact. And we mailed them all out. I had a seat little machine to print them, you know, burn the CDs, print the labels on them, and I packed and sent them with with uh, with old school um, uh, CD envelopes. And um, sometime around, I think 2013 or 14, when I moved to Florida, I started using a production company where I would upload one copy of the CD image to them, and then, and then every time I got an order, I would just send them the info, and they would burn the CD and print it and ship it out for me. Of course, it cost me some money, but you know, if people still wanted CDs, great. As of now, 2021, uh, I have no desire to ship CDs or DVDs anymore. Almost everyone has high-speed internet, except for a few people. I would say that 99% of my customers are people that found me on YouTube in the first place. So obviously they can watch video online. And my videos play just like YouTube videos. So I have no plans on on producing or shipping CDs or DVDs anymore. However, I have thought about putting together a retail package to sell on Amazon. Maybe something like all my entire beginner series, you know, on one CD or something, or my entire expert or developer series. If you are interested in something like this, if you would purchase a retail package like this, then drop me a comment. Let me know. If enough people are interested, I'll start, I'll start listing it. Otherwise, I, I'm just happy putting my stuff online. Jennifer from the U.S. says, I have downloaded your customer database template that has family member size. How would I be able to add the other family members' names, ages, and genders to the form? Of course, the customer template is free. Anybody can go grab a copy of it. I'll put a link down below, as well as links to all these lessons that I mentioned. Um, I would suggest creating separate records for the family members and then relating them together using what I call a self-join. That's where you relate a table to itself. Okay, I covered that. I've got a separate lesson on self-joins. I'll put a link to that down below as well. It's a free video here on uh, my Tech Help page or on YouTube. And uh, I also cover it in more detail in my genealogy seminar where I show you how to link to parents and, and children and all that stuff. But basically, everybody's a person, right? They're all, all the same details. You got first name, last name, address, phone, all that stuff. Okay, so there's no sense in creating separate tables or, or I've seen people do different fields in the same record, all right, in the same table where you've got, you know, your person's first and last name, then mother's first and last name, father's first and last name. No, they're all people. So keep each person separate in their own record and then just link to their other person and then whatever that relationship is, mother, father, cousin, roommate, all that stuff, okay? All right, so check out my self-join video. Wesley from Texas says, what I am looking for is a link on your website where I could type in, for example, combo box, and it would list all the courses in which the subject was covered. As I am now starting a program, I would desperately use this as a reference tool. Well, Wesley, there's a search box that's on the toolbar of every page of my website. It's in the header on the right, that should say. Well, let's fix that right there. There's also an access index, which is at that page. All right, I'll put links to this stuff down below. And the point of the access index is it's one page with every keyword in it on every course that I have and on most of my other videos too, seminars and templates and stuff too. So if you go to my website, just use the search button right here, right? Like combo box, all right? It might be two words too, like it might be one word or two words. Here's all the stuff, you know, all the places you can find it. The search index is stuff that I've kind of put in there manually, but there's also tech help videos where I've covered it, full course outlines, all right? Regular news articles. All right, stuff in the code vault, forums and comments and so on. All right. And in addition, you can go drop this box down here, go to the access index, which is also that link that I gave you. All right. And here you can use control F to find any words in all of my courses. All right. These are the, the new ones are up top, access developer 14 and beyond. But if you keep scrolling way down here, keep going, you'll get all the older classes too. access, you know, expert four, expert five. So go control F and type in combo box in your browser. And you can see over here on the right all the different pages that it's in included in. So I've covered combo boxes on a lot of stuff. Okay. 
So that's how you can search my site. And as far as the keyword search goes, it's not Google. All right, so my don't type in a long phrase. Keep your keep your search term as as short as possible. But if you type in like relationship, like that, all right, I should find any articles or whatever that have the word relationship in it. If you do want to Google search just my site, come all the way to the bottom, and I've got a link there all set up for you. We can Google search just my site. Dennis from the Philippines says, I want to make a database to track personnel in my organization. I need to track the assignment of employees, their previous office, current office, and when they were reassigned. Well, Dennis, you would need two tables, one for the employee, for all the employee information, first name, last name, all that stuff, phone number, and another one for their assignments. In the assignment table, I would keep their location, what, what office they're in, start date, and the end date of that assignment. So you can have multiple records. It's a one-to-many relationship, okay? Uh, watch my relationships video if you're not how, sure how to do this. There, are, I'll add two more links down below. Relationships, then you could store that information in a subform. Okay, their most current assignment would be the one with the highest start date and no end date. So you can use Dmax to look that up, and I got a video on Dmax as well. All right, so you put in like you know in the assignment table, you'd have you know president and CEO start date one one two thousand end date leave it blank for the current one. Okay, and then you could just Dmax to look up the highest start date, assuming that the start, assuming they don't have overlapping assignments, right? And that's how you do that. There's three videos that'll help you with that task. And of course, I should mention, if anyone wants to see any of these things in more detail, let me know. The more comments I get on something, the more likely I will be to make a specific video just for that. And finally, we've got Kenneth from the United States. Kenneth says, I'm using access to replace a commercial home finance program. One function I'm having a tough time with is a split transaction. Say I pay $500 on my car loan. I would like the registry to show $500, but allocate some to the principal and some to the interest. Thank you for your time. Well, Kenneth, the easiest thing to do that I would do is I would make three fields in your check register, the amount, the principal, and the interest. You could track them separately. So if you want to type them in yourself, that's easy. In fact, if you want to get like your whatever statement your bank gives you, right, you pay $500, let's say, you know, depending on the point you are in your loan, more goes towards principal toward the end. So, you know, at first you might say, okay, 450 is interest and then 50 is principal. Just type those values in. Now, if you want to automatically calculate the amortization based on the interest rate, I do cover that in my loan amortization seminar. It's not exactly hard. There's a PMT function you can use. It's, it's adding the extra transactions on that is actually more difficult. But if you just want to type them in manually, it's not that hard to do. Just put three, three separate fields, the total amount of the payment, um, the principal and the interest, and there you go. And you can add them all up accordingly based on uh, whatever the totals are. Okay, and you can use form footer totals for that. I'll put a link to form footer totals down below. Okay, so that was it. How was that? That was my first ever quick queries. I get lots of little questions here and there, and I try to answer people the best I can with a quick email or I point them to a different lesson, but I know a lot of you have questions very similar to these. Um, and so I'm going to try and do my best maybe once a week or so to throw together all the quick queries that I get and say, okay, here's, here, 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 here you go. Here's where you learn more information. All right. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Oh, and don't forget members get access to all of my tech help extended cut videos too. There probably won't be many extended cuts for the quick queries as these are just quick videos and I usually point you to other places, but there are many benefits to membership and I'll tell you what they are in just a second. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. 
YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.